Hi, welcome everyone to Book of the Month. Do more great work uh, for us to discuss this month. And um, I want us to start by reflecting what the book is about. So um, could anyone let me know what the book is about according to what you've seen so far? Sure, I can go. Yes. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to say that um, it was a it was a great book. More than a book, um, I felt that it's a workbook, right? How you can work on yourself. This is a very effective. It it, it is really effective, but you need to put effort to make it efficient, right? Um, there are some exercises, there are some activities, you need to take out time to do that so that you make the best out of that book. You get, like, if you set out to read this book, like you're not going to get tips and tricks. What you are going to get, like this book will help you to analyze yourself. And for analyzing yourself, you have to spend that time to do those little activities or maps which is mentioned in this in this books so yeah thank you thank you sonali so yes i was reading and skimming through some of your reviews um i was very happy to see some of the questions that the author um, um is setting in this book and also i found that for some of you it was like what is this book with all these maps for me to fill out right and um, I agree with some of you that this was also a book of discovery, right? And inner discovery of things about myself. Um, the book, and if I may, uh, something that I really enjoyed is the fact, and just like Sonali was saying, hey, uh, great work, which is one of the main concepts of the book, just does not come just like that, just by inspiration or from a muse. Like really, it's something we have to work on. So taking that into consideration, I would love us to just do a review, a quick review of the book with a video. So let me share my screen over here. All right, great song. Yeah, and uh, and I, I liked it because I see Rasa who's joined us today and probably Rasa let us know, but uh, where, have, you, have you seen, I've read this book? Do more great work. I uh, know part of it. I haven't read it yet. Yeah, so uh, I thought it was also a good uh, a good way to refresh the main points of the book, and uh, before we come into discussion. So, team, what I've done is that I've gathered uh, some of the main um, over here. Let me. There, there we go. I've gathered some of the questions regarding not only the maps. But what the uh, what the book is telling us and inviting us to do, so uh, I would love us and um, Van Rias, let me know. Um, I would love us if, if we could go into break rooms mm -hmm. and let's just review the following questions. And uh, obviously, this includes uh, some of the main concepts of the book. So let's think about an example of number one of, of bad work good work and great work that you currently do. What map allowed you to get to know more about yourself and why? Three, who were your heroes, role models, and what did they have in common? Four, when it comes to what's calling you, what were you more drawn to into map five? Was it processes, self-management, projects, relationships, or strategy? In map seven, what did you find uh, fit into the quadrant where you care and your company cares. Because as we know, it's great to do great work, but we want to ensure that also we contribute to the organization we're in. So if we found any quadrant or any specific tasks that fit in that quadrant. Six, how do you think you could use what's possible map into your everyday work? Seven, on page 133, we were invited to work in different, uh, in, in different ways. It says, change the rules of networking and thinking about us going to SAS North next week. 
What else can you do to network differently this time? Eight, what do you think this means? Nothing is more dangerous than an idea when it's the only one you've got. Nine, how could you apply MAC 12? What will you do? Feel free to share the idea that came to mind when you filled it out. You can, of course, go to the book for that. And number 10, explain how the great work makes your soul sing. And he says so when we're in that role and we're feeling amazing at what we're doing. So let's uh, share our experiences about what happens in our body and how we feel when we're doing great work. So if we could go into break rooms, uh, Rias, how many yeah. are we? So we are, I, I put us into groups of two and three. Does that work? Yeah, sure. So yes. basically feel free to screenshot this slide. And the idea is that you can jump from one to the other. Um, so we can share like different thoughts on the different parts of the book. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So right now it's... Uh, uh, and how long do we want? Uh, 10 minutes? Just one like, minute a, a, a question? Would that I'm be fair? We can we want more? I'm, I'm asking 15, 20 no. minutes? No. I, I think fi like 50 minutes. Let's okay. try 50 minutes first. Mm -hmm. Cool? Yeah. Okay. All right. Any questions from the, from the team? Yes. Any questions so far? I have a question. I have a question, if I may ask. Um, so, so there are almost 10 questions and I'm not sure we will be able to discuss everything within 15 minutes. So is the idea is to try our best and like just share our thoughts or? Yeah, let's share our thoughts on those and if needed, we can send you a message and you can let us know if you need more, more time. Yeah, because the idea and the idea is that we're able to come back and um, and actually share uh, our, like part of our reports, which is what we liked, what we didn't like, and how we're gonna put this into um, into work in our everyday lives. So, awesome. so yeah, awesome. we can come back to that. Mm -hmm. okay. Sounds good. And uh, yeah, okay, we'll go from there and uh, have fun chatting. Perfect. Thank you, Rias. That were really good question. Yeah. So team, well, I hope um, in that those break rooms, you were able to review some of the concepts you liked, your experience with the book, how how you liked a working book, a working book. Um, I know it has 15 different maps for us to get to know ourselves. It was more like exploratory. Something I want to share is that by the time I was reading this book the first time. I was a little frustrated. I was working at an agency and I would I would be called to this brainstorming sessions and I would not be able to consider myself a creative person. So I was like, I, I would see other, other people's ideas and I would struggle with it. I was like, why didn't it didn't occur to me? Um, and I think this book really helped me to understand that there are many ways to be creative. It's not about or just crazy ideas that you have, but how you solve a problem, it can make you creative. How you, um, how you communicate with someone, maybe it's something that it's hard to communicate, but you find your way through it and you try to do it, you know, with heart and, and but you think it through. So I came to understand that actually you can be creative in every single thing you do, how you cook, how you communicate, how you solve problems, how you work, how you come into a meeting. So I, that's why this, this book makes such a huge difference. And, um, and again, reading some of, the, of your reports, um, it's a book, something Sonali was telling us is that it is a book that probably takes you more than, uh, more than a month, maybe a month and a half to do. But yes, it's very like exploratory. Um, anyone else's thoughts? Um, uh, about the discussions that you had? All right, I'll, I'll say something yeah. here. So um, Ileana and I had a, a great conversation. Um, we were able to talk about three and a half maps 
<laughs> well, we, we were able to address three and a half questions. I got into the fourth one uh, with like 60 seconds left on the timer. But um, it was really great because I think what I got from it, um, from the conversation with Eliana, is that Eliana had been able to really tidily sort of tie her, her actual work experience and her experience here and the things that she's doing now to the book itself. And I think was able to really join the dots in regards to um, what she's doing right now, as far as great work is concerned and, and how actually she has put herself in a position creatively, I think, to do great work and to put herself in that position where she's doing things that are very important to the organization. Um, for me, <clears throat> it's a matter of reflecting, I think, on because I'm a fair bit older than Eliana, <laughs> uh, with a bit more experience, reflecting on some of the things that have happened in the past that have brought me to how I am here at the moment. You know, I mean, Map 2, I think, was really important to me in that regard. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it was it was a really great conversation. I thought the questions were really good and it really, uh, you know, really, really elicited uh, an interesting yeah. chat. I think it's funny that you were two together. Um, I, if I remember correctly, and maybe going into the questions about what we liked about the book, what we learned, you both refer to, and what else, which is one of the questions that the author mm -hmm. is like, what else, right? Um, how can we bring new ideas from, from what we've got? And one of the maps is like, show us the idea that you have, show us the craziest idea, show us the weirdest idea, yeah. right? And, and, and I, I thought this could be something that we can do um, as part of the, the brainstormings that we sometimes have, right? But it, it caught my mind that both of you were like, oh, I like the, and what else, right? How do we bring more ideas to the table? So you yeah. bought, both brought it up. Any other uh, learnings from, from anyone else? Anything else you'd like to share about, yeah. Allison and I had a really good discussion about like how doing each different kind of silo of work made us feel at the end of the day. And one thing that made me think about it is like at the end of the day, when my husband asks me like, how was your day? Usually if I was doing like a lot of bad work, it would be, my answer is always like, I'm exhausted. Like I'm tired. It was a really busy day. Like those are usually my responses. So like busy, draining, tiring right and that's like asana tasks answering emails getting just like you know job description task stuff done but when I've had like a great work day then usually my response is like oh it went by so fast you know like the day ended really quickly um I felt like I accomplished a lot because it was like something above my job description potentially that I was able to tackle and that's really satisfying Oh, wow. Yeah. Does does anyone want to share any examples? Like Raza was able to let us know like emails is sometimes bad work because you just skimming through it as fast as you can, right? So you're not missing anything. So Nali, yes. I can, uh, for sure. And uh, Carla, I totally agree with you. Um, as as we were discussing as well, Jackie, in our group uh, group discussion that how sometimes we feel like even we are working for 10 hours, we don't feel like 10, 12 hours, we, we just don't feel anything. And then some days you work for eight hours, you're like, oh my God, I'm not spending a single more minute in front of my laptop. That's that, right? <laughs> That's because uh, when your day is more so full of bad work. And one of the examples of bad work is, you know, speaking to the um tech support or customer support of like different ad platforms we know that we need to do it we need to solve the problems but like staying on the calls without getting a resolution and and i'm not saying i do it you do it khalil do it or anybody does it it's just like feels like bad work but that's has to be done and then um do you want the examples for all of that jackie or you just wanted an example of like bad work yeah, know. maybe we can yeah. share um, because obviously we want to, since the book is about what's the difference between good, bad, and great, a, a couple of examples would be great. Yeah. Yeah. 
so but then like that's that's bad work but what comes out of that is like why the book itself is so so like the title of the book do more great work it is so aligned to and I know this book is like uh, very very about what you're doing for the company and how you are like self-analyzing and things like that when you do more great work it's not only great for yourself but you're additionally adding to the success of your company as well because you're happy working you know what I'm saying so as I was telling you and Raza um, good work is what company is expecting from you but great work is what you are expecting from yourself as an individual where do you want to see yourself in few years right when you're able to align that with your work then you can not only take yourself to the newer heights but the company as well so i think mm -hmm. and and one of the great work i would say anytime i work I'm, I'm working something with the number and this and it, this is a very very personal book so everybody can have different skills um, I personally feel when I'm looking at numbers or anything, report analyzation, working on the uh, platform and things like that, even if I'm not able to solve the problem and I spend hours together, it's never a wastage of time for me. I just feel like I know that it's an investment. I'm going to get out of it. Yeah. 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 That's amazing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. And it makes me think about, because we have different areas of our company here together. So it makes me think of what's the feeling of great work in other areas. Like, Eric, I can think of you now that you're getting more involved in the project management, right, department. So what would, what does great work feels like to you? Um, actually, yeah, that's, uh, thanks for pointing that out. Cause like uh, we were, um, Riaz and I were talking about this too. And um, one of the things that does like get me excited is processes and like figuring out, like organizing. <laughs> um, I, what gets me excited is when I see it, like everything's untidy or like um, not untidy, sorry, um, but like disorganized and um, things can be placed in certain ways or like set up, formatted in a certain way so that, you know, in the future, the next time that we need it or use it or need to refer to it, it's there and it's already a, like in its usable format. Um, so like that's one of the things that uh, that really kind of like is getting me excited <laughs> to do great work. <laughs> that's great. Thank you yeah, for sharing. I'll, uh, I'll add if I, if I may. I think like what I really like in the book is that it's, you know, everyone has great good and bad work it's not like some people are doing great work and some people are doing bad work and i think that made me like it was kind of humbling because it made me reflect on on what i do and so i'll share some examples if, if that's okay jackie so for me i put bad work is uh being in meetings where i'm not really needed uh delegating and then not trusting and being reactive so i'd be like hey michael go off and do this and then i'm like hey michael why did you do that right and it's like well you told me to go do that so like trust me and let me go do it right um I think like other th duplication of efforts, I think is another one where it's like, you know, you have like me, Michael and Jackie on a meeting and it's like, well, we only really need one manager like here to be on with this client for, as an example, right? Um, back to back meetings, I think is another one. It's, it's, you're, you're stretching yourself. So like the, the quality diminishes across the whole thing. And I'm actually in the course of this back to back nightmare right now. So <laughs> one o'clock, I'll be there. So, uh, so that's bad work. I, in terms of good work, I would say sales. Um, meeting with the management team uh, to, you know, just do what we do, which is like talking about strategy and initiatives and things like that. Um, the great work would be um, getting out from behind the computer, going to uh, attend events, networking, being out there, business development, uh, deep and strategic thinking. Yes, I am capable of that. I know I'm impatient, but I am capable of deep and strategic thinking sometimes. Uh, spending time with the team. You know, like <clears throat> I think as the company has grown, you know, when we were six of us, it was like Matthias, you and me and Vasvi and like we jump on a call and be like, hey, how's it going? And it would be easy to do that. But I think as the company has grown, it's like harder for us to all get together like this. So I think for me, spending time with the team is great work, sharing the vision, inspiring, motivating, making jokes, like keeping it light. You know, sometimes we get, we get a bit serious, especially as we're growing. Right. So, you know, just having fun, um, uh, coaching. And then I think the last one is uh, thought leadership. So developing content you know going out there and being like hey this is what a good google campaign looks like and if 
for your professional services company, or you should implement this tactic, or, you know, just talking about um, like how companies can help grow and uh, sales and marketing and revenue, because that's going to help get the word out about what we do. So sorry, I know that was a bit long, Jackie, but uh, I thought it was important for me to share. Oh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Really uh, great. Ah, glad to hear. Uh, thank you for the examples. And you have a good point. We all have uh, work uh, in the three buckets. Um, no one, no one runs out of it. Um, and uh, it made me think now let's move. Maybe if we start moving to what we liked and didn't like. Um, some of your reports were very interesting when it comes to the maps. Oh, Jack, like I, I could, I could pretty much see the person like saying, this is jumping from one section to the other, this, and then we have a map. Like some of you had some thoughts on the structure. Can we talk maybe a little bit of what we liked and what we didn't like about the structure of the book? I would love to talk about this. <laughs> Please. <laughs> um, I love the, I really like the book. I think that it's like really valuable. I think that there's a lot of really good, like, uh, themes, really good insights throughout, like scattered throughout the entire thing. Um, and I really like that you can kind of look at it from like, no matter what department you're in, you can really understand it from that perspective. So when I read it, I see it as like a creative content person. And so I relate everything to that. Whereas when I was talking to Michael about it, like he sees it completely different from like a management perspective. And I think that that's really yeah. unique about this book. Cause a lot of like business oriented books, they feel like they're only directed towards like one kind of main focus and they're not flexible but this book is really flexible um that's what I really like about it but what I really dislike about it is it interrupts my train of thought a lot when I'm trying to like read through it and like an example would be like you're like reading some words and then halfway a sentence will get cut off and then there's like a a little simple tips section and then the rest of the sentence from that page will like continue after and I would like get thrown off I'm like wait what what just happened? Like, what was I reading? Why did my sentence get cut off halfway through? Like, what is this coaching thing? And I'm like, finish that. And then I have to like, go back and then like read that page to like, match up the words that got cut off. Um, I don't know, maybe it's just my copy that did that. But um, I found that it took a little bit longer to read that book, like read this book because of that. I just found that it didn't flow very well. Um, but I thought I still really enjoyed it, but that was my definitely my biggest problem with it was with the, who, how they designed and structured it, and that it's like a square. I, I don't I don't like that it's like a square. It's just a little, it's, a, it's a lot harder to like hold it like this. That's like my with, favorite part, though, Eliana. That's I don't like that it's square, square. Makes it feel less like a book. Yeah, like, I'm trying to like lean back and like sip some coffee with like a pen in my hand, and I can't lean it because it's like going like this like it's like really small but um but those are what I that's what I liked and disliked about this book thank you very interesting I had not very I hadn't noticed it like points. that can I add some yeah of course I, I really like the fact that he could jump around because like I, I remember like just starting to read this book and like the first page said said something like and you don't have to do it in the order and I was like wow no book has ever let me like jump around and I, I loved it. I, I did like a couple, like first two maps. And then I jumped to like the ones that I found interesting. So like role models. And uh, like, I, I really like that freedom because I feel like when I read a book, I, I like don't, I'm not a biggest fan of reading books because I feel like you just have to like, they, they seem boring, but like this made it less boring because you could just like jump from section to section. But in terms of interrupting the flow, I agree with Eliana, not the tips so much, but the quotes. I... I don't know why but I just like they didn't really do much for me like they, they seemed like a little pretentious at times and I was like this it's not really helpful like I would be thinking about like my day-to-day -day, and then a quote from some big businessman is like not really it wasn't really adding anything to like my train of thought and it was just there and you don't really know when to read it because it's just like in a box on the side and I just like started skipping them because I like I didn't really find value in them like I yeah like that was like the only two things that I wanted to say oh yeah that's uh thank you for sharing Vasvi different ways to see a book definitely um I which which also I wanted I was very and I would love to know Leslie Matias from your artistic and your point of view how did that work for you 
Well, first of all, I should not have got the audio book. It was like <laughs> the worst choice ever. <laughs> um, I I like the point of the book. Um, I like what it was saying. Like, you don't need to save the world. You you need to make a difference. I, I like that whole mindset. I'm glad to hear, Matias. Yeah. Um, well, in in terms of the the outline of things, uh, yeah, I didn't really like it as much either. Uh, I kind of threw me off from time to time, but the messaging was still really really good. Uh, I enjoyed the maps. They really made me think a lot uh, about the work that I've been doing, and uh, I really really like the whole separation of uh, bad work, good work, and great work. Like, uh, it really made me think of how I felt. Uh, during many different uh, campaigns that we did, many different projects, videos. Uh, and I was so quick to tell like which ones uh, really fulfilled me and which other ones were just good work, you know, important, get it out of the way type of thing. Um, so yeah, it was a really cool way to kind of analyze everything that I've been doing and uh, how I want to do things moving forward. So I really enjoyed it. Glad, thank you for sharing. Uh, moving to the learnings and the main three things we think we can apply into our everyday lives. Vani, Khalil, Roy, Rasa, Fernando, we'd we'll love to hear from you. Yeah, I think I, I associate great work with like getting into that flow state. So I think uh, just tying it back to a previous book, it's like removing all these distractions so that you can actually mm -hmm. give yourself the opportunity for it to be great work. Because I think we go into a lot of these situations thinking, oh, this is just a admin thing or this is just a, you know, quick turnaround kind of thing. And, it, you know, we don't give it the ability to maybe grow into great work. So I think just uh, may maybe eliminating distractions and uh, allowing it to become great work from good work is, is something that uh, I was thinking of when I was reading this book as well. So. Um, yeah, yeah, no distractions. Yeah, no, for me, the what Khalil was saying with the distraction stuff, I, I, I feel like that's a big problem with me just because my brain jumps from one thing to the other. And I feel like even though I need, I know I have to give something a little bit more thought and process if I want to make it great work, just kind of things happen where like meetings come up or I something or just something like last minute where like a client or tracking conversion tracking, something is just off where like I'm trying to focus and then something else comes up. It's kind of like trying to set the time aside to really focus on the things that I want to be great work. Um, but also like understanding that like, especially in this industry, like a fire can happen in like literally a second and you just kind of have to figure out how, where you can put your time so that you can make time to really try and do um, great work. Good point. Like um, a slide can be sometimes a, a challenge for, for us, but it's worth like giving us the chance to finish what we're doing. If it's something that really requires our focus. Vani. Yeah, I was just gonna say for me, I I I didn't necessarily just look at good, great, um, and bad work at at this company. I kind of looked at it across all the places I've ever worked, um, because there are times where I can definitely say, like, yeah, this was amazing work. And what I tried to do is to take that feeling and that memory of sense of accomplishment and pride and energy. Uh, I think which Sonali kind of talked to and rooted in my decisions to focus on what kind of work I like to do and what I don't, right? And 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 it's not so much as sort of saying, oh, I'm not going to do bad work or, you know, for me, bad work is administrative type work, right? Like those are things that need to get done. It's just about finding out, you know, does this need to be done? Is there an easier way to do it? Can it be automated? Um, how do I prioritize it relative to other things, right? So understanding like what that looks like. And also in the context of, of from a career perspective, taking the being intentional about taking the steps forward to doing great work and finding great work to do. And I think the other two things were, it just really reinforced for me is how to say no, always asking about the importance of how urgent is this thing? How important is it? You know, um, just really, because it's okay to say no <laughs> and, you know, not getting mired down in some of the busy work to focus on things that I'll actually move the needle forward for the company. I think that's really kind of reinforced that. 
And I think the other one with the whole idea of first idea itis is actually taking a step back sometimes in order to go forward faster, right? So rather than being tunnel visioned into one view and one perspective of, of how a scenario could be played out or how a solution to a problem could be approached, is like maybe take a step back and look at all the different dots, connect the dots and see what the different options are, um, get input from different people because having a diverse set of perspectives and ideas on on how to approach a problem is much better than like just me by myself, right? So, so kind of looking at that. So those were the three things that I, I sort mm -hmm. of took. Thank you. And thank you for bringing that how to, how to say no, because I did see that in many reports as something that, that, um, th that will be put into practice. Um, Roy, I think you also mentioned something related to that on, on how to, how to focus on certain things. And I, I think you refer to something related to that. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, <clears throat> no, exactly. Um, you kind of have to not worry about making everybody happy mm -hmm. um, because, you know, it is it is your job and like you should do the things that make you happy. Um, I mean, of course, some of the responsibilities that you have, like you have to make people happy because that's like, that's part of your job, but you don't have to make everybody happy and you can kind of decide what are the things and if you have a choice between, you know, making somebody happy with bad work or making somebody happy with like good or great work, you can kind of lean towards the the, the great side. So they kind of mm -hmm. give you a sense of which things do you say no to? And if you can say no to more bad bad work, then I think you will enrich your, uh, your life and then also like your job satisfaction as well. Um, yeah. One of the things I do like like the analogy about finding the mosquitoes in your life to be able to uh, recognize the bad work. Um, I think that was a good analogy just because like, um, they're the things that like kind of haunt you and like they chase you around and like they 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 just, they literally bug you. Um, so that's a good way to like recognize and um, to, to deal with it. And then also, you know, to evaluate and figure out what is good or, or great work, or probably more so for great work, is to um, look at that task and figure out, like, will it make a difference? And then understanding that, okay, yes, it will make a difference to yourself or, or your company or to your coworkers, then you'll be able to recognize more great work and, like, push yourself into that direction so that you end up doing more great work than bad work. Good question to make. You're right. Um, Allison, I know we will take a photo soon as a team, uh, but Allison would love to hear from you. Any, any closing thoughts on the book? Um, I think like my discussion with Carla, just kind of how, when I was going through it was really just focused on like what I liked about the book was when it had you make a list of how do you feel like, what are the changes in yourself you notice when you're doing like good, great work versus bad work? Um, which ties into like, you know, what Carla brought up about how, how do you answer when someone asks you how your work day was? Um, so like for me, I think that when I'm kind of engaged in the work that I'm doing and I feel like it has a purpose and it's not just busy work, like it's a lot more energizing, uh, I guess. So that's, it's kind of like my key takeaway is like kind of being more mindful of like, how do I feel about the things that I'm doing? Amazing. Well, it's, uh, 1 PM. So I know we all have other mm -hmm. meetings to go to and everything. So we read Do More Great Work yep. by mm -hmm. uh, Michael Bungay Sanier. Uh, if you wanna go into a journey of discovery and how you can do more great work, this is the book to go to. Thank you all for your yeah. perspectives and today. Sorry, next, uh, next book we have is Roy, right? Roy, do you wanna share a little bit about the book? Yes. Yep. <clears throat> so the next book um, I chose was Outliers uh, by Malcolm Gladwell. Um, so if you haven't, if you haven't read of uh, any of Malcolm Gladwell's books, like he's, he writes about like a lot of, uh, really interesting topics that make you think. Um, so this one is called outliers, uh, the story of success. So, uh, awesome. that's, that's going to be the next one. Thank you, Roy. Thank you, Jackie. Great job today and good book. We'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye.